Okay, talking about FreeCAD architecture, aquaponics greenhouse. So, York, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, I looked at the the guide, and for a noob on on FreeCAD, which I represent gladly, I can't get it. There's a lot of questions I have, like. What we probably want to do eventually is I, I think the quality is really nice. You go through a lot of stuff and I'm sure with every, you know, it's, it's great work. It's, it's, um, I think it's the, my, my summary of it is that all the t capacity exists. It's, can we transfer it to people who are new users effectively? So I have confidence in the software itself, but this is where we want to spend more energy on, on documenting the how to's like, for example, like you tell me the IFC workbench or whatever, the IFC capacity, I don't know how, what to do with it. Or just like uh -huh. setting up the, I, I can't even open up, you know, like without clear dis, uh, instructions on FreeCAD, I can't even open up the free, the first screen. Um, because when I open up FreeCAD, I, I can't, when I don't open from a file, it doesn't, I can't get to the workbenches even. So, um, there's little things, just little things that are trivial, but, but I mean, just something that prevents somebody from using it. But anyway, I, I think we can solve it. So I was going to ask you, um, here's my thoughts. What's, what's your schedule like? Because I, if possible, I'd like to, to get you to, to work with us and um, put energy into you teaching us how to, well, basically continuing what you're doing and uh, actually getting onto the, the aquaponics simple structure because I think it would be really valuable if we can open source that absolutely like just 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 being pretty fundamentalist in, uh, in our approach that okay we were absolutely using open source tools and a very transparent process but I think it's really necessary to do that because otherwise we'll be messing around with not having access to software and the techniques so I'd like to yeah. pretty much dive in so that the, the whole community benefits from it so that you know it's gonna be a little harder right now it might take us a bit more time to get there but I think we should do that because otherwise, you know, we'll, you know, we'll do the, the greenhouse. It won't be documented well. You know, we won't have the proper support. Be, you know, can't really build from it too, too much, right? So, yeah. so I'd like to invest the time that it takes to do it. What's your availability like after like these couple of weeks? As you said, you pretty much got projects going on. Um, yeah, th this week, this week, I'm still buried down in stuff. Mm -hmm. Won't work for me. Next yeah. week I'm in holidays, okay. out of here, and after that normally I should have time. Okay, so but I would, yeah, go ahead. I think what you guys are wanting are two different things. I mean, uh, porting things to, to freak out and documenting things are yeah. not necessarily the same thing. Sorry, uh, which is, so documenting and using freak out are not the same things? I mean, you can have one without the other. I mean, we can do both at the same time, of course. Documenting but... or using. Um, well, but, the, but okay, so let's back up to that statement. The question is, who's using it, right? If we want, you yeah. know, ourselves to use it, yeah, we can do that. But, but um, the way we roll at OSC is trying to get the, lower the barrier so that actually everybody could use it. So that when we have something that we can work on, we can honestly invite everybody to, to join that process. So that's why I would yeah. say that, yeah, from the OSC perspective, you really have to do both if you talk about a scalable process, you know? So, you know, that's the kind of experiment we're doing. We're saying, can we actually do better? Because I, I have a suspicion that once we actually get to that point, uh, we're actually going to see much better results. So we want to test it out. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah, um, so I would suggest that to to per, pursue the greater participation. You know, say we you know say we finally d got the nice blueprints of the the greenhouse. We actually built it in order to foster. I mean, so so yeah, some a lot of people are going to replicate. It. I think there's going to be a lot of interest in it. But we can extend the amount of um, hackability when we have the full full documentation in place. So, yes, for which reason, if we talk about, because I think here the potential is huge. The potential is actually, I looked at some basic numbers. It takes 225 square feet from first principles using documented techniques to, to feed one person like a full diet. And uh, 
that's, you know, I, I think the potential of this greenhouse is huge. I think uh, if we can really shake the world with it, I think the, uh, the potential is really high to, to do some breakthrough work for, for food security and open source and all that. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but that's that's kind of the, the philosophy behind it. That's kind of why I'd look at it just to just to kind of fill you in on approach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, ju just the um, the thing is, um, yeah, FreeCAD is not easy. Does not have an easy access at the moment. Yeah. It's something that's not ready, not finished, and it's still pretty beta software, and so it's not easy for new users. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, this can be a big opportunity to. Like uh, try to build something that's uh, easy, shareable, easily shareable. Um, document the way uh, we're doing it, so so other people can get into it mm -hmm. and, and understand what's going on and how to use it, etc. But um, let's say you're adding critique to to the to the. the and adding what and I think that's no no problem you see just something you must be conscious that uh, this is going to be a slower process uh, there are going to be some little problems like you just mentioned and that kind of stuff and um, so yeah it's it's definitely something that will take more time that you would do with more conventional tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, well, I don't know. That's yeah. That's for to decide. Yeah. Uh, um, um, for reference, when you use FreeCAD, so do you actually do the the design work in FreeCAD? You don't use Revit or something. No. Uh, what I often do, that's a bit why uh, I made the, the architecture workbench in that sense, is that um, I usually, usually model a lot in, in Blender mm -hmm. because it's faster than, than FreeCAD. Blender is a mesh modeler, a bit like SketchUp, and things go pretty fast in there. And so when you deal with simple shapes, uh, like uh, prismatic shapes, shapes that don't have curves, um, modeling that in Blender works quite well. Uh -huh. And uh, so you can do that as well, or a mix of, of both. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I'm not opposed to that. I think this is a great opportunity to involve the Blender community and the FreeCAD community, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Because Blender would also get us the nice, nice models, nice modeling. Yes, and uh, Blender is pretty much faster than, than FreeCAD, mm -hmm. and so I often do that because uh, when you design, when you're like designing architecture from scratch, you often it's it's better if if you play with shapes than if if you already put the walls at the right position. Uh, so for that, it's it's the same as when you're sketching with with a, with a pen and a paper. It mm -hmm. goes very fast, and so your ideas flow easily. How co how Point. fast can you model in Blender compared to SketchUp? Same. same really? Speed. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, do yeah. you do you think that's better than about five years ago? No, it was already powerful five years ago. The thing is, uh, SketchUp is easy to get to grasp for new users. Yeah. Blender is not. Uh, so, to to become as fast in Blender as as in SketchUp, you need much more learning. When you Why say much in more, you fast really quickly. Um, how many hours for base basic level like to catch up to freak to um, SketchUp speed? How many hours of practice do you need extra? I mean, I like a week extra? I can't, I can't say. <laughs> it's hard to quantify, yeah. But, I mean, we can say that in the SketchUp, people can follow a simple one-hour exercise to get, like, basic ability to do stuff. In Blender, that might extend to a few hours. Yeah. 
not also that if you guys are already using SketchUp, um, you can do the same with SketchUp. So you can do something more like um, step by step conversion between SketchUp and, and FreeCAD and continue to model in SketchUp and import stuff in FreeCAD and convert it. Uh, it works. It works quite well if you model correctly in SketchUp. That means if you, you know, if you do like uh, closed uh, objects, uh, well modeled objects without holes, without um, foldings, and if you model cleanly in SketchUp, um, you can easily build architectural pieces or parts on top of your SketchUp objects. Uh -huh. As easy as Blender. The difference is that in Blender it's easier, I think, to control that your objects are clean. In SketchUp it's a bit hard sometimes. You often do like small mistakes and you don't see them. Yeah. Do you use the, the SketchUp tool chain as well? Not anymore, but I used it a lot before. But uh -huh. today I'm faster with with Blender, so Mm -hmm. I have sketched for for the case I need it, but for example to import objects or that kind of stuff. But I don't use it anymore. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. No, I I see the challenges and opportunities. I think the opportunities are great As from the open source perspective. The path is clear. Yeah, I believe so too. And um, just I, it's it's not small. It's not a small undertaking. Okay, so um, here's a, here's one one other th thought to to bring in. Yeah. It could perhaps be that in one way we use top level assistants like yourself, people who are already familiar with the tools, to generate the yeah. libraries, from which point the world can manipulate them. What do you think about that approach? I don't know what what I I am I don't see very well what your workflow is. I mean, um, you are several people working on those projects, right? We have you know like we have different people coming in and out. It's you know it's there's some people that continue. A lot of people come in and out for a project. Um, we've used everything, all kinds of software from SketchUp mm -hmm. to. To free, not not so much. A little bit. I mean, a little bit of everything. And but the problem is that we don't have a good. We don't have a workflow. Someone does uh, something, and and uh, it's there. And a lot of times we just, we we miss simple steps. Like okay, we can't even export this file to some other format. Like the the brick press, the original file is in a Libre design, and we've got the the step files. But every time something you know, like you you go to a transformation from one. Uh, from say a libre to to the step, and you lose all the connections, right? So you lose all the part wow. assemblies. So, uh, so you have to kind of like start again, and all that. We don't have a uniform tool chain defined at all. So I think it would be good to the the. I think the strength of the the project could come in when we say, okay, use this, use this tool, yeah. learn it, assuming that we're willing. To teach people and others are willing to learn and I think that's actually a, it could be an opportunity it's like okay we're gonna teach you guys how to do this which uh -huh. would be which is a great way to go too. it's it takes more but it's a more creative yeah. approach and it, it's correct in terms of the long-term perspective of teaching people skills using free yeah. tools yeah that's true right so in a deep sense I mean I can just tell you right now is you know um, Basically, what happens is when nobody dives into it because they're afraid to dive into it because there's always a block, because it's yeah. harder. There's that trap that we fall into, right? That the stuff, the uh -huh. needed stuff, never ends up getting developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To give you a good, good example with the CNC torch table, we've built a prototype like six years ago. To date, there is no open source tool chain for the controls, and we're mm -hmm. working with Caruza, and they're gonna go, they're gonna go with closed source controls. Because uh -huh. they just don't have the time right now to develop the open source tool chain. And that, that yeah. trap I see consistently the open source community is falling into. And we want to make a stand on that. So kind of like, yeah. 
affirms that, okay, if we just keep dally dilly-dallying and not getting the solid solution, it just puts a huge, huge delay and obstacle on the whole community. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So... Yeah. yeah, but as far as the workflow, I mean, look, the, as far as the workflow, if we could, the quicker we get, I mean, what I do see is the power in is the modular approach where there's a few modules that we test and work out that we know they work and people can st start manipulating that at a basic level. And then as they start manipulating them and making to making machines, like, for example, the, the tractor is a great case. So when I talk about yeah. the tractor, I, I'm talking about the micro tractor, tractor, bulldozer, keyline plow and backhoe because they they are so similar and power cube you know because they've got so much similar design in them that when you master one you can remix basically uh, the different versions of the tractor from micro to bulldozer are just different instances of the same same modules put together in a creative way so so that way we focus on creating the assemblies of these uh, and that becomes the design challenge. It doesn't, it's no longer, do we have a power unit? Do we have a wheel? Do we have a frame? No, those are there. We already know those. Uh, now it's about, okay, how do you actually make them work when you put these together so that you can go from a 2,000 pound micro tractor, like the the one we're working on. Have you seen the the image of that? I'm looking at it right now. The tracked micro tractor? Seen the tractor. I haven't seen the Here, let me Here you go. So that, and we're also looking at putting up a gasifier, an eight inch wide by 36 by 36 inch gasifier on the back of that. So we're, we're running this, we're currently planning a workshop on this. So we're gonna run this on, on gasified wood, uh, actually charcoal to be specific. So well. yeah, so that's coming up. But basically, you, you have that same design. You put a bunch of... So that machine weighs 2,000 pounds. Uh, we're also interested in building a 36,000-pound bulldozer based on uh -huh. this module. So so you see, it's we've got the power cube nailed. At, nailed. Um, for this project, for the micro track, we're developing the tracks. We don't have the tracks right now. Mm. But we've got the other components like loaders and buckets and wheel drive systems hydraulic control panels so there's it's it's a highly modular approach that once we get the modules in place then we can have people you know at, like a, we have a child just putting together these power cubes and stacking them you know you, you literally stack six of these power cubes for a bulldozer and it's actually uh -huh. going to work that's that's our current strategy we're testing the limits of of modularity it doesn't make yeah. sense to have a a single power unit that's that's flexible like that can you actually put together these little micro tracks into a bigger machine so we're doing some testing on on scalability of the the system so uh -huh. yeah but from that perspective it's very useful that we have modules that we play with that we develop as soon as we can so so you don't have to know blender or or uh, freecad at the level that you do but but just manipulating objects like in sketchup modules that you can put together yeah. Uh, that would be very useful for, you know, that's something we can have anybody just start playing with, with yeah. an hour lesson, you know, and that would be, that's what I believe will make the project rise to something from the engineering, you know, FreeCAD geeks and all of that to, to absolute popular consumption, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's our mindset on it. That's the framework within which we, uh, we're considering it so yeah does that make sense yeah yes yeah, certainly and indeed that's totally uh, adaptable to, to to the house I mean mm -hmm. exactly same, yeah. same sy system so so the the word on the street is uh, August of 2016 we're gonna have a major uh, event here at factory farm where we where we build that 
certain ecology of the house, micro house with aquaponics and energy system. So you, you show a food energy housing production system that's 100% open source. Uh, ah. The first half of the civilization starter kit, including our own energy. We might have solar concentrator by that time. There's So basically just building that entire system as a product ecology of things that you can build from the dirt and twigs under your feet. Yeah. Uh potentially yeah, really even, cool. yeah i mean potentially melting our steel at, by that time because the induction furnace is in the works by joshua pierce of the michigan open source tech group that's in the works we might be rolling our own steel at that time too so Whoa. that'll be pretty crazy from yeah. biomass pellets off our farm showing a totally closed closed loop material cycles and yeah amazing kind of, yeah so it's worth doing and it's worth taking a deep approach so that this goes viral um, yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's cool, and uh, certainly I can I can I can help in several ways. Um, thing is, what mm -hmm. you guys would be wanting well, me to do? Yeah, actually. Yeah. So what I what I would like to ask you to do is so that we, once you get freed up, we actually spend you know actually hire you to do this work. Uh, can we do that on a pretty much so you commit your time to that for until we we solve it and the first exercise would be the simple exercise of getting the 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 modular greenhouse design using the panels that you've already pretty much done we've got to get the interfaces between them and various details but the concept is simple with about three you know like three main panel types and then various interconnectors we can build greenhouse structures like this right so so we want to get the detail on those get the details worked out and uh -huh. but but more than so so in this process that's the physical product but the other product is the education product as we do this we actually document it so that i can i can replicate it and others can replicate it um yes. and i would like to to call in blender and freecad for this task which yeah that I can do that, and I can, I can model the thing, and also, also um, uh, document it, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The question. Um, yeah, I'm looking now at the microhouse documents that you have. That kind of uh, that level is pretty much doable. Yeah, let me get you a link for the documentation on the micro house. Um, micro house, how to. Which means that we're gonna po not gonna do the workshop in June, but do you think we can do anything uh, beginning of July? Or is that too early? No, I I don't know actually what what you what kind of level you guys reach. Need, need to reach well we need to reach a level of uh, pretty much complete detail on the on the greenhouse but I you have to recognize that the greenhouse is a very simple structure it's basically three main structural components and the rest mm -hmm. is interconnection detail yes um, you know base super basic foundation stem wall I mean we can we can consider 100% panel or we can actually consider that the stem wall in front is a little is a CEB it's brick so we actually get the thermal mass in there so um, I mean the first implementation would be just plain panels don't worry about the CEBs and CEBs not everyone has but CEBs compressed earth blocks okay um, so here's the instructionals off of this page uh, click on the roof panels is where you get those roof panels that on that page click on number six on that page click number six for that's the roof panels I showed you before I think you've seen that um, so and then uh, yeah you showed me that thing. Yeah, 
I mean, that's that's all we have. I actually put up a web page on a hydronic system. Like, actually, we want to integrate. So, so here's this other page I want to show you. Open source hydronics. But this is something we we've got up our sleeves. The hydronic control panel, which I see happening. Like, I'd like to do that for the water heating in the greenhouse. Like. You don't have to worry about the floor, but the floor currently we're considering as having a, a trench in the floor for uh -huh. the water for the fish. Four cubic meters, about a thousand gallons. A uh, thousand gallon is the size of what we need. About, uh, but yeah, if you look at that's you know that's what we've done. We've got experience with that. Um, you can see the brick walls and, and stuccoed brick wall behind the control panel for the hydronics. But we're actually going to use this, basically run the hydronic heating from this stove into the uh, greenhouse. Unless we decide, yeah, I mean there's details. We're working on the uh, gasifier and, and heat exchangers too for our own open source stoves. Um, yeah. At some point, everything can be gathered inside a model room. But yeah, there are obviously a lot of different pieces. Yeah, what, what, I, what I don't get exactly is what, uh, up to what level you guys want to go. Can I you mean, explain that? Um, I mean, you can do very, very detailed uh, blueprints of this, um, which would be like the standard way. If you would like, if yeah. you if you would make a project that you had to deliver to some constructor, you would do that. So all the blueprints are, are there, and and the guy. Um, do their business with that and that's it and so you just basically draw everything the best way you can so there are less problems and and that's it uh, now you guys have a kind of alternative um, way of building uh, like you don't just deliver the paper to the constructor and no, we're That's supposed to do that. We never did that. That's what we, of course, we, where we want to get to, to, to make this. We want to see uh, this replicated. If it's a, if it's good enough, it's going to be replicated worldwide, right? So, yes. but it's not getting replicated because we don't have that right now, right? Our, our documentation is scattered, and we don't, we haven't drawn up those explicit blueprints because myself, Jonathan, and Marshall, other people drew up the last Microhouse Four blueprints, and we kind of had it inside in our, in our heads, but there were certainly issues when we didn't have enough plans to guide the people properly. We, a lot of it was, you know, we, we didn't have, we didn't go to the level of finish that we wanted to because we didn't have time. So, okay. But you, but you would like to have those. Absolutely. Blueprints. Yes. I mean, that's the idea. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so that we can, we can now start talking about somebody else being a manager of this project, the construction manager during this event. We give them, hey, here's the blueprints. Yeah. Uh, you do that. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can actually scale the builds. Because right now, part of our non scalability is that we don't have people that we don't have people, train people, and we don't have blueprints to, to, to give them. You basically explain how to do it. Yeah, pretty much. We look at the, the 3D model. I mean, there's procedural steps too. Like, if you look at those all those things, there's procedural instructions, but they're just conceptual procedures. They're not. They're not technical. What I mean, what do you call it? Do you? I mean, in a build, yeah. But look at this. I mean, in a typical build, people produce technical drawings, and a general contractor says, "I'm I'm going to take it from there." The architect yeah. never tells you how to build the entire structure, right? That's true. Right. So we do the same thing. We provide the concept, but because, and we have the, the full detail drawn out in various drawings, I mean, pre pretty decently full detail, um, like, for example, the, the roof panel instructional. And then we get out there and we do it. Now, 
I think the most the highest efficiency comes when the the person who's designing actually understands the build too so that it's designed for build right we yes. get an extra level of of efficiency from that because otherwise someone's designing something that's very hard to build like i would imagine is well i mean not imagine i know that's the case people don't design things to be built as a general rule only the really yeah. good architects might yes might do that otherwise you, yeah. you're paying a lot for inefficiency yeah as a standard practice so we want to cut yeah. that out through the open source yeah. that's totally true right and we've seen uh, that very clearly in, in in machine builds i mean certainly i mean as the story goes the you know the businessman is not the engineer the engineer is not the designer the designer is not the builder the builder is not the user that gives you a huge realm of non-human centered design <laughs> right you you have a, a sketchup model of that yeah that sketch model. yeah the house, house certainly so so if you right so yeah let me give you this presentation on this page the overall house should be let's see yeah yeah it's this page here uh, just I mean here's the file no wrong Where did that go? Um, okay. Uh, it's here. It's that's where it is. It. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thanks. So the first was. There's a file version history there. On that wiki, on our wiki page, September nineteen is the the file you want. Feature lockdown. That's the lockdown version. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the model was partially complete. It wasn't super complete, but it showed enough that you can see how the because it's modular. If you draw one, you know how everything else works. Except there's there's a detail missing on some of the interfaces which we need to do better like for example one thing we learned you can't you can't put the panels next to each other without putting some some form of sealer between them because of the irregularities um mm -hmm. like you want to put a some kind of insulation or some kind of a padding between the panels to make the roof uh higher performance for thermal insulation because the cracks are okay. are there uh -huh. Uh, and it's hard to, you can fill them in afterwards, but it's much harder than if you did it right off. Okay, so details like that. But the ba you. the basic design principle is we, we had the micro house standing there already, and then we put the panels on and built a new addition to that. And, and with the greenhouse, the house is standing already there, and we're going to add the greenhouse, basically the sloped structure to the front of the micro house. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you want the micro house, actually, I can give you the a detail of the first and second, because the our house is made of modules that have been built in s separate workshops, and we have files standalone for the first section, which was just 144 square feet, and then the second section, which was another, and then we built uh -huh. the section in between the two sections. So it was like three sections. And then the fourth fourth one was the long structure in the back of that house, which is the the 50 by 16 feet, the long, the, the big with the, mo the panels. That's what uh -huh. we built in a single workshop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think this is totally replicable in, in FreeCAD with the advantage that it would be it might be cooler, easier to, to get 
the final drawings from there, like annotated drawings. From where? From a Freaked model. Yeah. More, I think maybe that would, might be interesting. Uh, maybe it's possible to import this SketchUp model in FreeCAD. I would try that when I'm back from holidays. Okay. Import this in, in FreeCAD and start from there and then go like um, switching pieces. Yeah, yep. That would be great. Um, let's see, let me point you to the microhouse one and two. Let's see. Okay, so by the way, here's the, if you want to look at, that's our, actually there's links to all this. So there's Microhouse 1, yeah, it actually tells you a good, good overview of how the phases came about. Oh yeah, that's actually really good, you can see the, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. Let's see, 3D CAD and Microhouse 1. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Challenge for you. Can you go to the Dozuki, which I just gave you? Go to Microhouse 1. Mm -hmm. Yes. Click on it, and uh -huh. then go to Overall. Microhouse Development. No, go to Microhouse Modules. And then go to Overall Microhouse. And there, in the spreadsheet, you have this, man. See official development board, it takes you back to the wiki. Did you see that? Awesome. Yes. Yep, and then item number 9 is 3D CAD. So that's the SketchUp file. If you click on the link to work product. Can you find that? Number 9, 3D CAD. Yes. And then it takes you to the wiki page, which has the links and files. Yeah. So that's one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good start. Very good start. Yeah. And it, you can do the same for Microhouse 2. Let me see if I can find it. So that actually worked. That was good. Um, let's see if we can find it for Microhouse 2. So here's Microhouse version 2. So that was, let's see, modules. Modules. Oh, yeah, overall development. See the development board. Yeah. Uh, looks like it's there. SketchUp, yep. Yeah. Let's see. That's 21 August 2014. Um... Save that SketchUp 8. Okay, yeah. Yep. I don't see where... Where is the... I'm, I'm on the development board. Yeah, it would be... Wait. On a development board, so... So you clicked on the overall development board. It's actually the first link at the very top. It's included. Okay. Right. File. Mm -hmm. You see uh, right at the top the SketchUp file? Yes, yes. Now. We're trying to clean this all up. I mean, actually, we decided that the Dozuki is not a long term solution because it's not open source. So we, we need to eliminate it because we're kind of going to this Dozuki, like the instructionals platform, which uses an open, open format for storing data, but the platform itself is not open source. So it's not a long term yeah. solution for OSE. Yeah. Platform. Yeah, it's what iFixit uses. Did you ever hear of iFixit? It's instructionals for how to fix things. Uh, yeah, they use that. Uh, we met the people at the open source documentation jam and they suggested it and it looked good at the time. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we should do is continue this discussion and go from there. Yeah. But the problem statement is to define, uh, basically, to get the get the greenhouse as. Uh, I, I can write down the specs, but the specs for now are that we we are working in this particular case. We're working in a case where you can add the the greenhouse to the front of an existing structure. That's phase one. Phase two would be adding some more, um, just extending the model so it can be a standalone structure for some people. Yeah. Even though yeah. the standalone does not make sense as much sense energy wise because we're using in particular we're using the greenhouse to heat our own house because it's got good mm -hmm. solar catchment in the winter and we might as well put that energy that we're heating the house with into growing plants instead of just mm -hmm. heating space so we're integrating the thermal and food growing issues uh -huh. Here and this is, comes out of our dog fooding operation. The, the the stove burns a lot of heat, a lot of a lot of wood. We want to do better next year. Probably re we'd like to. Our goal is to reduce our heating needs by about seventy percent by having this greenhouse in front. Uh -huh. So like really minimal, and then eventually replace that with solar thermal. Complete solar uh -huh. thermal. Um, probably that's that's the way we're looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, funny because a uh, long time I don't dig anymore into heating problems because it's pretty much inexistent here in Brazil. Right. That's right. That's a funny thing, but yeah, I mean the tropics have it made. They don't need the greenhouse. Yeah. You might need sometimes air conditioning for uh, cooling, right. but it's not. It's also not something that you can pretty much live without it. And um, so, yeah, but that's totally different problem. Right. Mm hmm Actually, uh, if you look at this, let me sh show you this thing. Fun foundation concept in MH2 expansion. We should have these files, so Chris Reinhardt would have these files if they're any useful for you. That's a different model that I believe uses the... So here's another... Where is our wind? Where is this thing? So this model is uh, was or some other conceptual designs built around Microhouse One, and we want to. So that would be a different file than the one for the, the one I showed you before, because that's basically when we took this on, we didn't start from this, for the uh, back section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's basically what we did. That, that we did that. That was Microhouse One. Then to the second one. Yeah, that's pretty much what we did. We did the section in the middle after that, and then we built the back section. So that all happened at end of 2013 and in 2014. Starting with, uh, yeah, I mean, we moved in here just last March. And we had that one yeah. little unit, and now we have... Uh, a much more livable space, much very comfortable, and the microhouse idea is is very tight. It's not um, if you're indoor and it's it's tight on space. It's definitely tight on space. So expanding that mo in a modular way worked very yes. well. And that's cool because you have like there are many things possible and. Um, yeah, many things to do with FreeCAD with that. Mm -hmm. 
And you can see the, the inklings of the modularity. Like if the detail is correct, then yes. filling in sections is easy. I mean, for us, I mean, we didn't do it the easy way. I mean, there was, there was not enough um, thought given to the interface design to make it a, a seamless process to make additions. I mean, you. I mean, you gotta just have a standard that is well documented, and and basically you have to think think out the the additions bef in the design of the first one. That can't be an afterthought. Mm -hmm. So, for example, right now, as we do the mi the greenhouse, we need to think about okay, well, what what happens if we wanted to make it bigger or smaller, or yes, you know, we that. should think about all those issues. Like, how do you is this going to be, uh, how do you facilitate if you wanted to add on to it or whatever? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, lots of research on that page. Yeah, yeah, there's some good work here that definitely is moving forward. Now adding the aquaponics for food production is a big one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool, yes. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So you're you're pretty busy this, this week and then you're going on vacation, so we should talk again. Uh when should we touch in next? Because I mean I I'd like if you have any time, I mean what's the when's the next time we could yes. um, just meet to get to keep keep discussing this and what, move what, it forward? What would you like how do would you like me to, to, to work on this? I mean would you like to like contract me to do paid job or you want me to do that I can just contribute to the project like the same as I contribute to open source stuff right uh, I mean for free but um, then I go slower right because I must let my paid work pass first right um, so it depends a bit I don't know what you guys want, but yeah. uh, I feel uncomfortable to do paid job mm -hmm. for that because it's not like it's it's hard for me to give you like a, mm -hmm. you know a result, a, a right. concrete result that that I can deliver, and I find it hard to to like to take someone's money uh, without being able to promise something. Right. And, um, so I'm not sure. Not yeah, sure. no, I mean, I mean, I think we know what, you know, we got to get your time and get the um, pay for the ability to to get us up to speed to get some basic design and hopefully through this process, as we do the greenhouse, the end product will be we, one, we've got a greenhouse design, but more than that, we've got a pr uh, tool chain that we can start teaching yeah. people. So so we definitely want to get your time in on that so to pay you for that to guarantee your time and we can you know just keep checking in on these meetings like the next two weeks if you're available but then talk about you know look at lay, laying out the work plan and uh, yes, discussing those details mm -hmm. like what, what yeah. will be the deliverables and expected times yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely okay. definitely I can, I can work on this like um, start building the, the the greenhouse start importing pieces from from those uh, existing mm -hmm. SketchUp things, organize things uh, between what's what could become shareable modules and and stuff, mm -hmm. and to build libraries and that kind of stuff. Yep, yep. So that's what we want to do, and and whatever you do, like, um, doc of course documented and i think you've shown that you can document well like you showed me the 19 page document the intro document that's great we want to i want to just put that online and we can continue yeah. uh, i'll put that online and we'll just continue working on that so that okay. I, i'm basically going through it and i'll just write questions and uh, we'll make it into our official training course for for uh, precad i'm i'm hoping that after this with the greenhouse as this as the first uh, example we can build a curriculum around that so we can offer that as something that we teach in our skills training for for uh, our community yeah now here's the other thing if you um 
right now we have so just tentatively speaking about schedules if you're going to be deployed on this in june i could see that by the end of june if you ha if we actually have you working on that as a priority i mean we can we can definitely get the design going in which case we can talk about putting forth the workshop at the end of july which would yes work for actually, us actually um, if we can like um, speed things up speed things up by by reusing some piece of the of the sketchup material that you guys have yep uh, and, let's say there is no blueprint at the moment so everything that's uh, that's coming would already be a benefit then yes i think right yes, it's possible to have quite a lot during the during june yeah um that's right so and chris reinhardt has the original micro house one and two documents if you if you can't find any of the files that are on his log feel free to email him uh, let's see, I'll give you his email. So Chris Reinhardt is, is who we had doing that. He was with us our, as our architecture guy back in 2013. So mm -hmm. um, all I the files should many. be there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, okay, but... Yeah. I, I, did, I, did, I hadn't seen that there is so much SketchUp stuff already. Yeah. So there's actually a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, it's good, good base. We can really use that in, in, in FreeCAD. Yeah, that's great. And if we can document, let's document how that process happens, because I mean that's one of the tool chains we need to document. Yes. Yeah. If you want to see, if you want to go through our albums on, that are still online um, for any of the construction work, that construction detail, which would be relevant, here's the, here's this. Uh, it has all our, that's our, that was our photo repository. It was an open source um, equivalent to Flickr, but um, that was Trove Box, but that went down actually, so that's going down, but it's still up for a little bit more time yeah now here's the other thing if um if you're involved in this do you want to come to the states can we invite you for the actual workshop did, did you ever do um <laughs> would be cool but um if it's pretty soon if it's soon not sure i would be able to do it, it uh, right now if we i mean right now on a schedule it looks like it's possible for the end of july so so, and, you know, as we go into June and like, you know, first two weeks of June, we'll see where we are. Then we can discuss that if you're by any chance able to meet it. Because the way we do it, like if you'd be a, an instructor, what I, I mean, what I would like to do personally is have a like a three day workshop where the first day would be FreeCAD, FreeCAD and Blender crash course. And then the second day is the build of the aquaponics, second and third yeah. day. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that we're taking no. advantage of the ability to train our community and you know generate real yeah. education materials. It's cool. Just that. Uh, let me check that. Um, because I have the things. There is a conference, an open source conference I would be going to. What what conference? 
it's fizzle it's um a software leave a free software conference in in brazil now we'll give a talk there let me just see when in this because i never know fizzle fizzle f-i-s-l Hmm. It's in Portuguese? Yes. In eight, it says 8 to 11 the, July. Yes, exactly. So it's beginning of July. It's it's national or international? It's international, actually. It's English? It's in, it's in Portuguese because it's in Brazil, but the talks are a bit half is in English and the rest is in Spanish and Portuguese. Oh, that's cool. So, oh man, that's... Is that a big conference? How many people? Yeah, it's pretty big. Hmm. I don't know how many. Oh, wow. Conferences. So is that the biggest free software... Con it's a free and open source software conference? That's not, I'm not sure it's the biggest one because uh, there are a couple of big ones now. Mm -hmm. Like the one I went in Brussels earlier this this year is also big but it's it's the biggest one in in latin america and it's one of the biggest ones in the world so it's the biggest one in latin america and it's it's pretty much everyone from latin america comes in yeah did you go to this before yes once was it good yeah pretty good actually yeah. lots of conference and uh huh. president of Brazil was there and uh, that guy from Pilot Bay was there and it was oh, pretty wow. cool. Pretty active. President and, uh, of Brazil? They care about it? Yes. They care about open source? Yes, yeah, right. a lot, actually. Yeah. And, uh, What's the. Is, is Brazil one of the more active countries in South America in open source, or what other countries are there that are really, really supportive on a government level? No, definitely it's the most active one. Because you have lots of. Uh, government incentive for, for free software. And, so Brazil is the main uh, champion in South America? Sorry, what? Brazil is the main champion of open open source in South America? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, that's good. Well, we're going to the source. <laughs> uh, All right, that's good. So yeah, I will be there by that time. The rest of July, I guess it would be possible. Yeah, so we'll, let's talk about it uh, early June yeah. if, if that's going to be feasible at all. Yeah, we can talk about where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Cool. Very nice. So, okay, so next meeting, do, can we set up a meeting for next time? When, yeah. When would you be available? Okay. Time actually after after in two weeks. Okay, can we check in like maybe next week or you're gonna you're on vacation? Uh, next week I'm on vacation. Okay. I would be out office. Okay, so out of the office. Um, so that would be beginning of June. I will be back here in the in the weekend of the thirtieth. Saturday so, or Saturday the thirtieth. You're yes. back? Okay, so maybe Monday? No, Monday is perfect. Monday the 1st. That's... Okay. Um, that sounds good. Uh, Monday the 1st. Um, do you want to try for 11 a.m. CST? That's Which one is... for me. It's okay. Does that work for you? Yeah, let's do it. So, like today, that was at 2 p.m., so it was three hours, so it's three hours earlier than today, yeah? Exactly. Excellent. Okay, excellent. So, let's, next time, let's cover, like, what the work plan would be for getting this aquaponics structure. Like, right now, our th our train of thought on it is mm -hmm. to invite, if, if we can invite you and, and get that as an opportunity to learn FreeCAD and open open design with with you as a leader of that in FreeCAD and all that 
Um, I was also looking at, if possible, invite some of the heavy hitters, some of the subject matter experts in aquaponics, so that we really nail this as an open source, a nice open source initiative and an open aquaponics and mixing, so mixing the architecture part and aquaponics design, which would be, a, I think, a very exciting thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. We shall talk then, and if I have questions, I'll, I'm going to keep going through your document, and if I have questions, I'll let you know. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. So I look forward to this. So have a happy, uh, happy, happy holiday. Relaxing. Thank you. And... Okay, I will. Okay. Take care okay, then. See you then. Uh huh. Bye bye. Bye.